Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of Strong and Steady. I am Jen. Let's get going with our warm up. So extend your arms out from your sides and start working in small circles. Good. And once you've done six to eight of these small circles, go ahead and change directions. Keeping nice and still with your torso seated on your chair. I've got my folding chair. As far as equipment goes today, I've got a folding chair and a couple sets of dumbbells. Right now, let's go through big circles. As we've been doing lately, we're going to start off with our weight training, that portion of our class. And then as we get to the end, we'll get down onto the floor and do some mat pilates for our core and stabilization work. Okay, so if you need uh, a blanket on the floor, um, pillow as a bolster, it would be a good opportunity to do that um, either now or between the segments. Okay, so now I'm gonna come to standing. I'm gonna place my hands on my hips and start off with that good hip hinge, okay? So as we hinge, remember we're wanting to warm up the hamstrings and glutes, so our focus is predominantly there. I have a soft bend in my knees, which I'm keeping, and as I rise, I'm staying nice and stacked. I'm not thrusting in the hips or contracting through the quads as I do this movement. My focus is hamstrings and glutes. Good. Okay, now that you feel good blood flow, you've related to that muscle and feel it working, now we'll add in a bend of the knees. We'll say now it's our body weight squat. So I like to cross my arms on front, elbows parallel to armpits, and I hinge and sink. Good. So weight in your heels as you go back into your hinge and squat. Nice neutral spine, body's angling down, but shoulders stay back. Two more. Good, okay. Now, <clears throat> today's circuits, we're gonna do um, six, eight, 10, okay? So the six is just gonna feel like a warm up. We're gonna start off with a squat to lunge, okay? So six on each leg. Then we're gonna move into chair push-ups and then upright rows. Okay, so I'm gonna do a body weight squat here. You can add a dumbbell if you want, but the main thing we wanna get out of this is leg work, okay? So the chair is on my right, so that means when I go down into my combo move, my lunge, I'm gonna keep my right foot down as I use my chair. Okay, so you ready? So we have our body weight squat, squat, and then I'm gonna put my hand down and go into my lunge. Two, and lunge. Three, and I want a nice straight spine. I wanna think about using my glutes as I go down. And I'm gonna go down as far as I can, maintaining good form. All right, now let's switch to the other side. One, squat, and lunge. So I'm standing to the right of the chair, and so my left foot is stuck to the ground. And I'm doing a reverse lunge. Three. Four. Focusing on my right glute. And six. Good. Okay, next I have my chair push-ups. Now if you're using the edge of the counter, you should be fine. I'm using a chair, so I'm gonna stack some weights into it. And I'm gonna step back into my incline high plank, activating through my armpits. Feet are not kissed together. I have them as wide as my shoulders. I'm lowering my chest to the chair and pressing back up. Trying to maintain my high plank. So it's not my neck. It's my chest, and I'm keeping my elbows close to my rib cage. And six, good. And last one is upright rows. Okay, so I'm gonna grab two dumbbells. I'm gonna stand in my shock absorbers, knees softly bent, 
and exhale as I draw my elbows to the ceiling. Trying to keep my chest soft and pull from my elbows. Four, five, and six. Good, okay, I'm gonna set those dumbbells down. I'm back to my squats to lunge. Okay, so now I've got eight. Squat, lunge, and glutes. Good. Excellent, we got two more. That was six. Focus on the legs. Focus on hamstrings and glutes. Don't focus on the knees and the quads. Good. Okay, I'm gonna drag this to the other side. All right, so squat, squat. And now left foot is down. And I'm lunging using that right glute. Two. Three. Four. Four is nice and straight, low belly strong. Exhaling before you stand. Two more. Seven. And eight. Good, okay, now we have our push-ups again. So my hands are on the back of the chair, palms on the chair, position so you have tension in your armpits, not shortening your neck, rather shoulder blades are down. Feet, toes into the ground and press. Two, three, keeping those elbows in as well as you're able. We have eight of these, so four more. Two, three, and four. Excellent. And now upright rows. All right, ready? Inhale and exhale. I call this pulling up the zipper. So think about trying to pull up the zipper on a very tight vest. So you have to draw the belly and zip the rib cage closed. Five, six, seven, and eight. Good, okay, last round of tens. So the chair's here, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep my left foot down and do my squats where my right knee is going to the ground, okay? Squat and lunge, 10 on each. And lunge. Three. Four. Exhale before you start rising. That's where you need that core engagement. Seven. Eight. Two more. Good, okay, now I'm flipping my chair around. Other side, squat. Now as we keep moving here with fast transitions, you should feel your heart rate rising. Four. Five. Glutes and hamstrings. Good, two more. Excellent, push-ups. 10 push-ups. Okay, over your chair, squeeze through the armpits, lower the chest and press away. Now, I acknowledge that 10 push-ups is a lot. So evaluate your good form. Stay with what you can do. If you feel it starting to hurt in your low back, stop. If you feel your pelvis dropping, if you feel your shoulder blades winging together too much. You want stable shoulder blades. 
Last one. Good. And now upright rows. All right. Ready. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Into the chest and exhale as you pull up the zipper. Two. Three. Four. Five. With control. Don't just drop the weights. Visualize contracting and lengthening. Eight. Nine and 10. Good, excellent first round. Okay, second round. Now we're gonna turn things a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna start with a, go um, a sumo squat in a goblet hold of a dumbbell, okay? So that means we've got it here. So we'll do a sumo squat, and then we're gonna press out and back in, okay? so. It's going straight out. And so as I do so, I'm really putting tension into my wrists, okay? If that doesn't feel good to you to extend your dumbbell and extend your wrists, and as a result, your dumbbell is getting long here. If that doesn't feel good, go ahead and make it even. So hold on to the dumbbell by the ears and not do the goblet hold. After that, we have tricep kickbacks bicep curls, and rainbow dumbbells. Dumbbell, okay? So we'll walk you through that as we go, okay? But first, let's get into our sumo squat. So heels in, toes out. Patel is pointing out, those headlights are not forward. The headlights on your knees, they are out. And so we're gonna get into our inner thighs, our outer thighs, and our glutes, okay? Hold your dumbbell, what, dumbbell whatever way is comfortable. Okay, we got six. Squat and out. Squat, two, three, four, five, and six. Good, now grab two dumbbells and we're in a bent over tricep kickback. Okay, so we're hinged, draw the elbows up to the ribs. Exhale as you straighten, two, three, nice and slow, four, five, and six. Good, lower those dumbbells with control. Next, we have 360 bicep curls. Okay, so we can either be seated on your chair or sit in your shock absorbers. So 360 bicep curls involve that external rotation, right? So we're gonna curl out and around in that circle, up, out and around. So that may not be, or may be totally fine with your shoulders. But if you find that it hurts, just stay with the bicep curl. Good, okay, six of those. And now rainbow dumbbells. Okay, so I've got a heavier dumbbell and I'm sitting in my shock absorber, so knees are bent, weights in my heels and I'm gonna draw a rainbow around my body, okay? Ready, one dumbbell, out and around. Two, three, change directions, one. Exhale, keep your torso still, three. Good, okay, back to the goblet squat press outs. Okay, sumo stance, goblet hold, squat and press out, three. Now be aware as you press out, you want your torso to stay still. Five, six, seven, and eight. Good, grab that second dumbbell, bent over tricep kickbacks. Draw the elbows up, weights in your heels, exhale. Two, three, control the swing, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
Good. Okay, 360 bicep curls. Get in that bent knee stance. All right, curl out and in. Two, three, four. Now I like to use my breath to stabilize my core as I'm swiping out. Six, seven, and eight. Good, okay, dumbbell down. All right, rainbows, sit in your stance. All right, ready, out and around, like you're painting a rainbow. You might even feel the weight distribution on your feet change as you swipe around your body. As you hit four, change directions. Two, three, and four. Good, okay. Now we're down to our tens. All right, so heels in, toes out. I've got my dumbbell, goblet hold. All right, ready, inhale and exhale, squat. Two, three, four. Keep it out of your shoulders if you can. Extend from the lats. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, that pair of dumbbells. Bend over tricep kickbacks. Inhale into the chest. Exhale as you hinge, keeping your shoulders back. Draw the elbows back. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice isometric hold. Eight. Nine and ten. Okay, 360 bicep curls. Those triceps are feeling it. Let's go. Exhale, curl round. Two. Curl. Three. Draw that circle. Four. Five. Good. Exhale, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, nice work. Okay, last round, rainbows. Okay, get in your heels, knees softly bent, belly button in, elbows back. All right, let's go, one two, elevate over the head, over the ears, four, and five. Switch directions, one, two, three, exhale, four, and five, good work. Okay, nice job. Get a quick drink if you need to. And we'll go on to the next set. All right. So we have, we're gonna use our chair now. We're gonna do some mountain climbers, but we will use our dumbbells as well. So we're gonna have chair mountain climbers, and then we have reverse row three ways. So that means we'll get bent over, do one arm, then the other, and then both. So we're gonna get a lot of nice back work there. Then we have an RDL to an overhead shoulder press with just one dumbbell, okay? So we're gonna hold that dumbbell like a good morning, they call that, where you hold it to your belly. Focus on that hinge, RDL, and then we'll press to the ceiling. Okay. And the last one will be back on the chair, seated bicycle crunches. Okay, so our chair mountain climbers, we're gripping the chair on either side. We're gonna step back, focusing on being supporting our pelvis with our strong lats and obliques. So exhale, step back. 
Good. Okay, so we're in our nice inclined plank. And let's go. One and one. Two. Three. Two. Four. Two. Five. Two. And six. Two. Good. Nice core work. All right, reach for those dumbbells again. All right, bent over rows, three ways. All right, so we're hinging forward. All right, exhale, left, right, and together. That's one. And keep the tension in the armpits. Don't completely let go. We want those lats to keep burning. Four, two, three, five. Two, three, and six. Two, three. Hinge your way up with low belly engaged. Okay, now we have RDL to shoulder press. Okay, so I've got a single dumbbell. I'm gonna hold to my midsection with elbows back. I'm gonna sink into my RDL, or sink into my hinge. So exhale, I'm sinking, okay. Press heels to the ground to rise, and then press the dumbbell to the ceiling and back down. So this feels very mechanical. Two, three, and very much within our center of gravity. Four, it's like that dumbbell's going up an elevator. Five, and six. Good, okay, set those guys down in our chair. Now we have bicycles. Okay, so for our bicycles, our hands are at our ears and we're gonna contract across the body. So we're thinking, for instance, left hip, is that knee, left knee is going up, it's going toward the right armpit or the right elbow, okay, ready? And so together with that, that right heel is gonna get really heavy, okay? Exhale, one. Two, three, four, five, six. So it's common to talk about knee to elbow as you're cueing, but I want you to go even further that it's armpit to knee, okay? That's drawing through so you can get that lat activation. All right, now we're back to our chair mountain climbers. Okay, so turn your chair around. We're gonna grasp on either side and you're gonna step back into your incline high plank. All right, we've got eight, ready? Two, keep that belly button in. Four, and your goal is to be as still everywhere else as possible. Seven, Eight. Good, nice job. Okay, now we have that reverse row three ways. So reach for your dumbbells. All right, I'm gonna give you the front view now so you can see how my arms are working, okay? So I'm hinging, soft knees, flat back. All right, exhale, one, two, and three. Two, two, and three. Three and four, two, three, four more. So think about your back, not your chest. One, two, three, and four. Excellent, okay. Set one dumbbell down. We're gonna hold the dumbbell by the ears and to the chest. Okay, here's our mechanized RDL to overhead press. Ready? All right, bend over, hamstring and glutes, and press, and back down. Two. Three. Four. Hamstring, glutes, low belly, chest and shoulders. Six, two more. Seven. 
and eight. Good, okay. And now we have seated bicycle crunches. All right. Okay, legs in parallel, hands at your ears, let's go. Opposite, one, and one, two, three, and you're hollowing out your belly. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Excellent. Okay, mountain climbers for our last round of tens. Okay, position your chair, grasp on either side, walk back into your nice high plank. Ready? Squeeze to the armpits. Make sure you're stacked over your wrists. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, two more, nine, and ten. Excellent. Walk your way in. Okay. Reverse row three ways. All right. Dumbbells. All right. So find your nice upright position as you're getting tired, where you're going to let go of is your good angle, your good neutral spine, okay? So as we're standing nice and tall, our heart is lifted, we're in good posture, okay? Now, get comfortable with your stance, soften your knees, and hinge at the waist, maintaining that nice neutral spine. All right, ready? One. And two, left, right, together. Three, right, together. Four right together five right together six right together seven right together eight right together two more you can do it stay in stable together and ten right together arms down exhale hinge to standing Okay, RDL to press. Set one dumbbell down. Grasp them to your midsection. Grasp that dumbbell by the ear. Comfortable stance. Back to that hinge. And heels contract and press. Nice and smooth. Good, make sure you use that exhale to engage your core. Get into the habit, even if you feel like you don't need to. Eight. We want the core to be active with every movement you make all the time. 10. Good, okay, and now our seated bicycle crunches. Okay. So find your chair, find your sit bones. Legs in parallel, hands at your ears, not pulling on your neck, okay? I just like to have my fingertips touching behind my ears. Okay, ready? One heel gets heavy, the other leg floats, contract. Two, 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 four, two, five, two. So I'm not pulling from my neck at all. I'm pulling from my armpit. Six, two, seven, two, eight, two, nine, two, and ten, two. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to make our way down to the ground for our last round of lifting from the ground, and then we'll work our way into our Pilates. Okay. So use your chair. The ideal way, remember, is to go down into a half kneel as we're able, okay? So I have a single half kneel, and I'm gonna bring both knees together. 
And I'm gonna make my way down to the ground, putting weight on one hand, rolling over to my fanny. I could bend at the elbow and continue to lower myself to the ground and then roll over onto my back. Okay. All right, so we have, we're gonna start with a chest press, okay? So here we are laying on the ground. We have a nice neutral spine. All right, I'm getting those dumbbells close to me. Okay, now in this first round, we're just gonna go over the movement and then we'll talk about methods to make it more challenging as we go, okay? So we're gonna start with chest press and then we have skull crushers and then we have um, single leg raises. We have a core movement, which we'll get to, and then we have glute bridges. Okay, so feet on the ground, knees up, legs in parallel, dumbbells at our side. Now you can either have your elbows out or elbows in, so palms facing or palms away from you, whatever works for you. Okay, ready? So press and down. Two, using your breath before you press up. Four, five, and six. Good, okay, now based on your weight, you may want one dumbbell or two dumbbells. So I don't know what you have there, but we're gonna do skull crushers. So I'm gonna choose one dumbbell and I'm holding it over my chest and I've gripped on either side by the ears, okay? And I'm gonna bend at the elbow lowering the dumbbell toward my head, thus the skull crusher, and then contract to raise. Now the silent worker here too is my lats because I want to focus on keeping my elbows nice and still. Four, five, six. Now I'm gonna keep that dumbbell over my chest and I'm gonna lift my right leg up, okay? And so, my right leg is gonna become a dead weight for my core. My left leg, I'm gonna keep my heel into the ground, okay? And I'm gonna exhale as I lower my leg toward the ground and contract to bring it back up. Two, three, and I'm conscious of what my low back is doing. I don't want my back to arch. I want my belly to sink toward my spine but my low back to remain neutral. Okay, now I'm gonna bend at the knee, lower the right leg, and extend the left heel to the ceiling. All right, lower, exhale into the low belly. Remember again, we're trying to stay neutral in our low back, not arching. Three, four, five, and six. Good, okay. Now, we have glute bridges. So I'm gonna take this dumbbell and I'm gonna rest it on my hips, okay? And I'm gonna do hamstring and glute and low belly work and I'm gonna weight it, okay? So dumbbells at my hips, kind of laying on both. All right, now, knees stay in parallel. Don't let them kiss and come together. I want to activate through my inner thighs and make them work to keep my knees still, okay? So exhale, dig those heels into the ground and press up and down, up and down. Three, four, five, and six. Good, okay, and you should get that sensation in the, that posterior chain of muscles there, your hamstrings and glutes. Okay, now we're back to the press, okay. Now, for those of you that want something more, let's go ahead and extend one leg out. All right, so I'm gonna press, but I'm gonna have one leg out, okay? So one foot in the ground, one leg's extended straight um, off of the ground. Okay, ready, steady, go. Two, three, four. Good, okay, I'm gonna pause there and switch legs. One, two, three, and four. Good, lower that weight. I'm gonna set one dumbbell off to the side. Now I have skull crushers again. Now you can do that same business with your legs again to add more weight into your core. So left leg is down, right leg's extended. Skull crusher, one. Two, three, 
forward. Okay, and extend the left leg, right leg down. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we have our single leg raises. So what can we do to elevate this work? Okay, I have the dumbbell over my chest and focus on keeping my shoulder blades down. I have one leg that's bent and I'm doing raises with one leg, okay? So how about I straighten both legs, okay? So now I can feel it already in my low back because more weight is away from my center of gravity at my belly button, okay? So if it's too much, you can just add a, a small bend in that left knee, okay? Rather than a straight leg, okay? So play with that. All right, because the goal is not arching the back as you do the single leg raise, okay? So I am extending my right heel toward the ceiling and I have my left leg extended, either flat or with a slight bend. Okay, so we have um, four of these. One, two, three, and four. Good, okay, now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna extend that right leg. Left leg's gonna be extended to the ceiling. One, two, three, and four. Good, okay, now we have our set of glute bridges. So dumbbells back on your hips, knees in parallel. All right, heels digging in, toes are light. Exhale, contract from the hamstrings and glutes. One, two, now don't forget about your low belly. Three, four, four more. One, two, three, and four. Good, okay, now we have our rounds of tens. Okay, so we're back to our chest press, okay. All right, so I've got the elbows in, I've got my dumbbells. What am I doing with my legs? Okay, I can do a couple of things with my legs, all right? So I can draw both legs up over my hips, okay? So now I'm, it's still close to my center of gravity, all right? But I'm not controlling whether I'm arching my back or not from the use of my legs. I've just got to rely on my low belly, okay? Let's try that. So we have 10. <sighs> Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Good. Lower the dumbbells with control. Now remember, when you have both legs floated up into this position where the knees are bent at a right angle, this is called chair position, okay? All right, good. All right, so now we're to our crushers. Okay, so the dumbbells over the chest, grabbing by the arm. Okay, we're gonna float both legs up into this chair position, maintaining that neutral spine. Okay, so we have 10 skull crushers. So what if we lower one leg down to the ground and raise it so the heel taps at the same time as we do our crush, okay? So dumbbell lowers, heel lowers. One, two, three, everything else stays still. Four. Okay, now let's switch sides. So I'm gonna stay with the elbow hinging skull crusher and left foot is gonna drop. One, two, legs stay bent. Three and four. Excellent. Okay, return both legs to the ground. All right, now we have that single leg raise. Okay, so we did it with legs extended. Um, we could do it. Um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do um, it with both legs in chair and the dumbbells extended over our chest, okay? And we're gonna extend just one leg straighten out and away. 
like we're extending it through a male slot. Two, three, and four. Let's go to the left. Exhale, extend. Two, three, and four. Now lower both legs with control. Now, here's a little um, secret. The dumbbell weight over your chest is actually an aid for you because it adds weight into your torso, keeping your shoulder blades stable on the ground. So it does add some weight that your chest is needing to bear, but it's actually a stabilizer. So it can be a big helper for you, okay? All right, so we're back to our glute bridges. All right, so remember, we always want to keep our legs in parallel here. We don't want our knees to collapse, okay? So dumbbells on your hips. Dig those heels into the ground. Feel that activation in your hamstrings and glutes. Inhale into the chest. And exhale. Contract through the belly as hamstrings and glutes contract to raise the hips off the ground. Three. Four. Five. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Okay, now I want you to take those dumbbells away. All right? And I want you to place your palms down on the mat. Okay? Now, we're going to go up into our glute bridge, and we're going to talk about all the muscles that are supporting our pelvis floated off the ground, okay? So palms are down, and let those palms be really active into the mat, and feel the tension and support that activation is giving you from your lats, armpits down to the hips, so lats and obliques, okay? Dig the heels in, exhale, contract and drive up. Okay, now active palms, feel the energy in your lats and obliques supporting your pelvis on the top side, okay? Heels are digging into the ground to activate hamstrings and glutes. Don't forget about that low belly. Grip hard, let that feel like a corset wrapping around your spine, supporting your spine from the top side so it all doesn't rest in your low back. All right, I want you to feel really good about this activation here. Inhale into the chest. Exhale into your inner thigh, pelvic floor, transverse, and rib cage. Okay, now with the next exhale, your left heel is gonna become very heavy and your palms are gonna get active into the mat, especially on the right side because the right heel is gonna float up off the ground as you extend that leg out and then return, okay? So you're straightening one leg and supporting your pelvis with the other leg. Exhale. So you have to support that whole torso from shoulders to hips with the muscles in your back, in your belly, and in the back of your legs. And your goal is that your pelvis doesn't shift to the ground. Exhale. One more on each side if you can do it. Good, now lower your hips back down to the ground. Draw your knees to your chest. So that gives you a good um, understanding of how important it is to drive all the muscle activation necessary to support our spine. Our pelvis is a heavy guy down there. And when we're lifting it off the ground, we're using a lot of muscles to support it. But when we take one chair leg away, right, what things have to work even harder to create that stability, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and roll over onto our sides, okay? So we're gonna start off today or continue today with some sideline work, okay? So in the principles of Pilates, we like to start with really good stabilization to know and activate in our core the right way every single time. And as you call our core setup, 
starts with your inner thighs and pelvic floor and it leads up to your transverse abdominis followed by your intercostal muscles that aid in zipping of the rib cage. Okay, so now we're stabilizing everything um, in our bellies. Okay, now when we're on our side, we don't have complete stabilization. When we're on our back, our shoulders and hips are, are secure. They're stable on the ground. And so it's very easy to keep our spine protected and a baseline. When we're on our sides, we only have two points of contact, okay? So that's where we're starting, okay? So when we have on our sides, we know, okay, I'm gonna use my lateral muscles here. So here's where you might wanna have, if you need to, a little pillow to support your neck because we wanna be in a spinal neutral, all right? So you can use a pillow, you can crook your elbow if you want to help support but you still want your shoulders to be in parallel. So you can see that I've created this nice space between my ear and my shoulder, and I'm holding my own head up with the muscles in my neck. And I'm on my right side and my right arm is extended palm up, okay? So if I extend my left fingers to the ceiling, I have a nice parallel shoulder setup. okay? Likewise, I want parallel hips. And so hopefully this is not uncomfortable for you to be on that right hip, okay? So my spine it is a neutral position and my legs are not straight underneath my body in a straight line. I'm gonna bring them forward a little bit, hinging, drawing my ankles forward, okay? So here I am, all right? And here's my, my stacked shoulders, but I'm not gonna leave my arm up there, okay? Now, I'm gonna go through my body setup here. So I'm working on inhaling into my ribs and then exhaling, thinking pelvic floor transverse rib cage okay i want to hold these parallel lines as i work in this plane okay inhale into the ribs into the chest and exhale pelvic floor transverse rib cage okay with our next work we're going to inhale into the chest and as we exhale we're going to imagine that our oblique that top side oblique is going to contract and the top leg is going to float straight up and then back down as I inhale. Exhale. And imagine that that leg is just floating up off the other leg, being drawn by the strong contraction of that oblique. And you're drawing from the heel and not the toe. We're working that top glute in this single plane, straight up and down. So we're thinking right, that's my top oblique, and right glute. But I'm not wiggling in my pelvis. It is staying stable, up and down, even though only my right side, oh my goodness, I've been saying right oblique, I meant left, sorry guys. <sighs> Good, now lower that leg with control. Okay, so that's our single plane of movement there, straight up and down. Now we're gonna move into some new planes and we want to maintain that stable pelvis. We didn't really challenge that stability by moving straight up and down, but now we're gonna go front to back, okay? So we're gonna contract and draw our heel back to our fanny and then draw our leg out to the front, okay? So exhale float the leg up off of the other leg so you have a nice parallel line of your body okay hold the weight of that leg into that top oblique that left oblique okay inhale into the chest and exhale contract through the left hamstring drawing the heel to the butt then inhale and then exhale into your transverse to stabilize your hips and then exhale into that left oblique to draw the Toes forward, but keep only as far as you can, keeping your pelvis neutral. And return, heel to butt. Exhale, draw that foot forward into the front. So we're still working glutes and obliques, but we're thinking a lot more with our pelvic floor and transverse because we're moving in new planes here and we want our shoulders and hips to stay stable, stacked on each other. 
and we're not whipping that leg through. We're mo moving nice and slow because it's harder, but it helps you think more. What muscles am I using to support to maintain my spine in a neutral position? Good, one more. Good, now hover the leg over the other and return. Okay, now give yourself a little rest. So now in the series of progression, because I tend to work through progressions, now we're gonna work through the most challenging one for today, which is we'll float the leg up off of its pair that's on the ground. And we're gonna start drawing tiny little like marble or golf ball sized circles with our heel. Okay, so now we're mo moving in multiple planes of movement, not really stopping. We're going to try and draw those circles, keeping them all the same size for now, like five to eight of them in one direction, and then we'll change directions, okay? And here our measurement is, again, stability, deep low belly. Our belly's not going to puff out. Our pelvis is gonna stay stacked and our shoulders are gonna stay stacked, okay? All right, so get yourself into your position, okay? Nice and parallel. I'm gazing up at my left fingers toward the ceiling, making sure my shoulders are parallel, okay? I'm palpating my left oblique. I'm gonna inhale into my chest. Exhale, contract, draw that heel up. All right, now, always start your exhale before you begin your movement, right? Inhale into the chest. Exhale, pelvic floor transverse rib cage and start your small circles. And this is like the stirring of the pot, right? Nothing is moving except for that uh, femur in the hip. I've got really long exhales. Once you start feeling a good burn in that glute, now you can change directions. Good, okay, hover the leg over the other. Bring it down and now draw the knee in towards your chest, okay? And now stretching through that glute, you can do a little spinal rotation here if you want. So I'm opening up my chest and my left palm toward the ceiling. Good, okay, now we know what we're doing, right? Okay, now we're gonna roll over onto the other hip. Okay, so I'm gonna be down on my left hip and I'm gonna set my body up the same way as I have. This is gonna go much faster because we now know our work that we have, okay? So shoulder tucked under, okay, my arm is extended out, palm up. And if I extend my right fingertips to the ceiling, I know that I'm in parallel. All right, my spine is in a neutral position. I'm gonna draw my legs forward slightly. Okay, good, okay. Now, I'm on my left side. That means my right side's what's working, okay? Inhaling into the chest. Exhaling into my body setup. Pelvic floor transverse rib cage. Inhale into the chest. And then exhale, right oblique and glute. Draw that leg off of the one that's on the floor. In back down. And I want you to contract through that right oblique and return. <sighs> Inhaling in the chest through the nose and out through the mouth. Two more, focusing on the heel. 
Okay, leg returns. Now we're going into the front to back, right? Okay, so I'm only gonna give you a second to rest here. Inhale through the nose, into the chest. Exhale, body set up. Contract and raise that heel. All right, draw the heel to the butt. And then exhale into your setup, contract the oblique to draw the leg forward. And back, hamstring, oblique, hamstring, oblique, stillness. If you feel your hips rocking as you draw your leg forward, change, shorten your range of motion a little bit. Only go with as much range of motion as your hamstrings will allow you. Good, last one. Good, okay, lower the leg with control. Now we're going to our small circles. Okay, so find that energy inside yourself. You can do this, all right, ready? Inhale through the nose, into the chest. Exhale, body set up, leg floats. Inhale again, and then exhale into your circles. Squeeze that torso with that transverse like you're a tube of toothpaste. Five, six, seven, eight. Now change directions. There you go, last two, good. Now lower the leg with control. Draw the knee forward toward the chest to stretch that glute. Extend that left palm out. Lower the shoulder blades to the ground and open the chest to the ceiling. So both palms are facing up toward the ceiling. Good, now draw that leg back and we're gonna roll onto our back with knees toward the ceiling. And we're gonna end today just going over our body setup. So I want you to place your hands at your sides and your feet are on the ground and your knees are pointed toward the ceiling. And you have a nice parallel line so that your um, knees aren't collapsing, right? We're just reviewing here. And we're gonna go into our imprint, right? I'm gazing up at my ceiling here and I feel my head heavy into the mat. And I'm relaxing through the chest and I'm feeling my shoulder blades, blades <laughs> and my lower rib cage in the mat. I feel my pelvis. I feel my elbows and my hands. And I'm also attuned to the space, the natural curvature, that space in my neck and in my low back, okay? And now I'm gonna draw my breath deeply in through my nose, into my chest. And feel my chest expand laterally. And now I'm gonna exhale deeply. Inhale into my chest. And now as I exhale deeply, I'm gonna think lifting the pelvic floor, wrapping the transverse, zipping the intercostals. Strong low belly. Inhale and exhale. All those three, pelvic floor, transverse, intercostals, as you exhale. And as you lay there and work on this inhale, exhale, be mindful that your low back is preserved in its neutral. So you don't press your low back into the mat. You don't have that sensation 
of feeling those vertebrae and feeling your glutes tighten and tailbone lift. Okay, you want to maintain a nice neutral. Inhale. All right, I'm rolling over onto my side and I'm gonna press my torso up so I'm in my seated position. Nice job, okay. I liked reviewing that body setup for your core. Take that with you, that habit or that knowledge has to become your habit every day. You can institute it in your strength training, in your gardening, everything that you do so that you continue to activate those muscles and that daily work becomes subconscious and will continue to build toward a stronger core. All right, thanks for joining me today, guys. I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day. Bye.